everyone, it's Reba. Welcome back. Happy to have you. I just wanted to end this vlog by um, checking in and going over my library book haul. If you've been watching my library vlogs, you've seen that I have visited several different libraries so far in San Francisco in our public library system. And each time it's been fun to see how uh, each library differs, how they're unique architecturally, and also just in how they um, stock their, their different categories in the library and um, cater to the demographic that, that most frequents that particular uh, location the most. That's part of the fun of going to each of these different libraries just to see how they're all different. Um, but the one I went to for this vlog was the Eureka Harvey Milk Branch, which is in our Castro district. The Castro is known for having a predominantly gay um, demographic or population. And so you can see in the neighborhood um, how welcoming and accepting of uh, the queer community it can be and so it was fun to see that reflected and lgbtq voices amplified in that library they dedicated like whole section to fiction and nonfiction, and made sure everything was labeled labeled properly so it was easy to find um, and i also thought the teen section was quite large um, in that library and they had vinyl records for, for um, available to borrow from that library, which I haven't seen um, at some of the others I visited. So that one was super unique, super fun, and I got some great books. Um, before I get into my haul, let me just give you like a quick book update. I just finished reading this poetry collection um, Winter Recipes from the Collective by Louise Gluck and it was wonderful. Again, I'm just like still getting familiar, getting to know poetry um, and what I like in poetry because uh, I think that's like there's like reading and then there's like knowing what you like to read um, and I'm quite comfortable with fiction, what I know or knowing what I like, but with poetry, I'm so fresh and green. Uh, so I'm still learning what I like, but I did enjoy this collection. It's um, kind of melancholy and chilly, <laughs> I guess. Poems on loneliness and like loss and grief and I really enjoyed it but it did make me feel kind of melancholy um, which is not a bad thing I really enjoyed it and then I'm also finishing out the Neapolitan Quartet I'm um, almost halfway through the story of the lost child which is the fourth um, and final book of the series I read books two and three last year and this series just keeps like getting better and better for me. That's what I'm reading right now. And let's talk about what I picked up at the library. I put two books on hold um, at the library so I could pick them up when I was there. The first book I picked up at the library was this. Um, it's actually a two books in this collection, but I, what I want to read out of this is the... Um, Ian Forster, Ian Forster's A Room with a View. This also has Where Angels Fear to Tread, but um, I, I borrowed, or I put on hold A Room with a View and received this. Um, all that to say is I will be coming in fresh to this. I know it's a classic. I believe there was a film adaptation of this that I think I have seen parts of, or maybe I've seen the whole thing, but I don't remember. I think I, I saw it as a child if I did. Um, and so I only remember like kind of the essence 
um, but no plot or character details. I want to read this because I read Checkout 19 last year and the character in it um, like talks extensively about that book and it inspires the character like the the book inspired um, the the narrator and the character in the book at like a like 17 or 18 years old to go to Italy and have these expectations of what that trip would be like and so I don't know I, I will probably be reading a lot of books um, because of check, Checkout 19. There was like so many authors and books mentioned in that book that I was just like stacked into my Goodreads TBR. Um, but this is one of them. And so I will be reading that for that reason. But it, I believe, takes place in Italy. Um, and it's about like a young girl traveling with, a, with an family. Um, it says, follows the carefully chaperoned Lucy Honeychurch on a visit to Florence. There she meets George Emerson, an unconventional young man whose social status is unequal to hers. She is intrigued and inspired by his refreshingly free spirit, which puts her in mind of a room with a view. And once back in England, she finds herself tempted to defy the claustrophobic snobbery of her family. Anyway, sounds fun, um, and yeah, I just inspired by Checkout 19, which I loved, so that should be fun and interesting, and I felt like reading um, a more, an older classic at this time of year. The second book I put on hold was Burnham, Burnham Wood by Eleanor Catton, Catton? Um, this one came out last year, I think, um, and let's see, yeah, 2023, um, but I saw some good reviews on this, I read some good reviews, like, um, and it was on a lot of, of lists at the end of the year for, like, notable and, um, best books of 2023. And it sounded really fascinating to me. I think this book is about a like anarchist gardening collective or something. Um, and it's a bit of a thriller or it has kind of an exciting um, plot. And it sounded really fun. Uh, like a maybe a stranger like, uh, unique take on climate fiction and then I also besides picking up books on hold I you know walked around and got tempted by all the other books at the library but I did take um, a couple that I just had to um, again poetry I wanted to get more poetry I picked up um, a collection from Adrian Rich this is Dark Fields of the Republic, poems from 1991 to 1995. I've been hearing about Adrienne Rich. I've never read any of her essays or poetry before, um, but I, I understand she's like well-regarded in kind of feminist activist communities. I believe it was when I was listening to um, Rest, is, Rest Is Resistance or Rest As Resistance, uh, a book I read last year in audio. I, I think it was that author that referenced Adrian, Adrian Rich um, quite a few times. And so I think she was just, she stuck out to me when I was in the poetry section. But um, yeah, I'll give this a go. Let me know um, if, you've, if you've read and enjoyed Rich's poetry. I think she's also an essayist, but uh, I, I skimmed through and I did read, uh, quickly read one of one of the poems and and liked liked it. So I'm excited to read this collection. And then I picked up James Baldwin. I have been meaning to read Giovanni's Room for some time now, and um, I just got to do it. I've been I've been really um, excited to read this. So this is the year. 
this is the time. Um, as far as James Baldwin goes, I read If Bill Street Could Talk a couple of years ago, um, three or four years ago, and like was just enamored, fell in love with it. I thought it was beautiful, just absolutely stunning. A beautiful um, love story about um, romantic love, familial love, incredible commentary on America and the criminal justice system and racism in America. Loved Baldwin's writing and I'm excited to read this one because I feel like this is another I mean, I think Baldwin in general is quintessential, but this uh, Giovanni's Room in particular seems like uh, a quintessential um, read. All right, that's it. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.